Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshiks mainframe channel. This is Moshiks and today we continue the uh, mini series that I started in the previous video actually together with uh, Peter Jacob uh, out in Germany where we use Rex or Brex on MBS 3.8 to um, produce a whole series of Unix like utilities that accomplish one task at a time. And um, last time we uh, created a utility in Brex that uh, showed us the time when the machine was last IPL could be info, useful information sometimes and uh, and today we're going to look at how to uh, produce information that um, shows us who's who's logged in online if you remember back in video m62 about six to ten months ago i created a program in rex here that shows us who, who am i logged in as and i called it who am i so that i could type at the tso command line who am i it would tell me what user i'm logged in which is very useful especially if you're a systems programmer or the administrator of a mainframe and you have multiple logins sometimes it's very useful to see who you are in this particular session now today we're going to write a similar program which is just going to show us who is online on the system right now who is logged in on tso and and I actually wrote a, a similar program in one of the last videos, uh, well, uh, maybe about a year ago, where I can do something like TSO who, and it shows us I'm right now the only person logged in, it shows which, TSO, which login procedure I used, and which um, terminal I am attached to. Uh, and this everybody can already execute, it's written in assembler, but I wanted to do the same thing today in Rex. So while this utility accomplishes the same thing, that's not a typical Unix answer. Unix would only answer uh, the name of the people that are logged in of the users. So we can actually try that uh, on my Linux machine here. And if I do who, it just tells me here are the users. So I want something formatted like this. Uh, obviously this would be similar to the terminal name. Uh, so let's try to get started with the minimum possible to show us who is logged in and then I'm sure that uh, some of the community members can, can log into the Moshix mainframe in the cloud and start to extend it and we're going to put it into the Brex samples uh, partition data set that's on the uh, that comes with every Brex distribution so that we can uh, we can do that here that uh, there so everybody will be able is that welcome to go and, and extend it now one thing that I want to say about that is that Brex on MBS 308 is not exactly the same as Rex on um, MBS ESA or OS 390 or or uh, Z, ZOS in that the pointers are being returned in Rex on the mainframe they return in hex whereas here they're returned in decimal and so you have to, have to have, uh, treat the pointers to storage areas in the address space a little different so but uh, let's go and look how we're going to do this here in this case and I don't know why this always abandoned ever since I installed Brex I have um, way more abends than before um, I'm sure that uh, Brex still needs uh, some fixing such as the pointer handling that I mentioned before also I found out it's not that easy within Brex to call other um, scripts uh, or Rex programs you can call them as if they were functions or kind of import functions but you cannot call external Rex programs so I'm sure they're going to be working on that and make it better and better so uh, why don't we go and start um, I already created here an empty example as you can see here we already have uptime we have several other uh, examples but um, let's start by writing a program here every Rex program always needs to have the comment, uh, including Rex in the, in the first line. Okay, so mm, let me put in caps on. Okay. The way I like to write is that I create a bunch of, because I'm already so used to um pc style code editing i'm gonna say here so let's start with accessing the areas so cvt we always start from cvt right decimal 16. Um, you can access the uh, the common vector table at address location 16 of every address space in mbs was 390 and zos so that's always a good start um, so let's write the pointer so a function that returns a pointer the return converts to 
decimal storage and I'm this time I'm not going to type the program and then and go fast because some people actually ask me to uh, write the program as I go and try to comment even though I have to think and write code at the same time so maybe actually I uh, will not keep this up for very long because it's um, so here we return a pointer with this function this finder will return a value from storage given a certain pointer uh, storage argument one argument two so the first one will be the address the second one is the length of the value we want to return uh, okay and this one is uh, return a pointer I can already see it's a little hard for me here to think and talk at the same time so it's not too boring for you guys. I'll maybe do the most important parts uh, in real time and then I'm going to switch to accelerated playback. Um, so here's a table that we need to address to get the names of all logged in users and that's a table called um, ASVT. So let's go look at that. So MVS ASVT table. The first answer you're going to get is always going to be from the IBM, uh, but that table didn't really change that much. Um, ASVT. The ASVT field in the CVT points is the address space vector table. Okay, so we know that that's. Um, so how where can we see the table let me see the table please um, hmm, there is an article here I haven't seen yet no ASVT lost ASVT entries interesting but yeah, um, I'll look at that later. Let's leave it just there. Um, OS three ninety ASVT. Well, let's just do like that. OS VS two ASVT MVS. Should be able to get. Yeah. So this is from a version slightly older than the MVS we're running. That's for MVS three point eight. But if it's there, that means it's also in MVS three point eight. So I'm going to use that. Okay, um, ASVT. So you can hear the CVT has an entry for ASVT. And uh, let's look at it. Oops. Here we have the A from the ASVT. We go to the that the, that's a vector table. We go to the ASCB, which is the address space control block. So every address space has a control block. Um, and we're going to go and find some information from there, um, such as the accumulated time, and we could also get um, the job um, the job name, which is what we really want, and, and for TSO user, it's the user. So that's what we really want to get. And so we're going to get from ASVT to the ASCB. Um, so now we need to find out how do we get from the uh, ASCB, from the ASVT, to the <coughs> to the uh, ASCB. So let's look. So let's keep this in mind here. This is page 43. Yeah, we know that. That's exactly what we just said. Um, that's all well understood. Okay. That's not. Uh, maybe it's still here. Let's find ASVT. This contract contains all the tables. It's an older publication. System logic library. Okay, ASCB. To tell us how we get to the ACB from the ASVT. This is the RMCT table which we used last time to find uh, a reliable source for IPL time.
Yeah, but I want ASVT, which finds nothing. ASCD. Let's see what we find. You sometimes have to read hundreds of pages, uh, but after a while you can become well versed. It's been a while since I accessed the ASCB. In fact, it was exactly when I wrote that program in Assembler for who last time. Um, and I know that this is how I can get to all the entries, but um, Well, I will have to research this a little bit more. There was a, an entry called ASVT. Yeah, here it is. Maximum number of address spaces. Okay, so we, need, we need, want to get this information so to know how many users are actually even there. Um, and we get the pointer from ASVT plus four because it says here, yeah, yeah. So that was, was right, so that's how I remembered it. Um, it's 512 down, and then the next four bytes is the number. Okay, so that uh, looks okay. All right, so now we traverse all the address spaces to ASVT max U minus one because we start from zero. And now we get the address space control block. Um, what is it called? Uh, STG. This one, I don't remember. I have to go look it up. I will look it up and then come back and uh, run in an accelerated mode so we can get to this uh, table with all the users a little quicker. Be right back. Thank you.
Okay, as you saw from the uh, execution with trace, that seems to go well, but now let's go and remove the trace command, which is very useful for debugging, but obviously uh, uh, what we saw there is it's looping through this, uh, trying to find an address space that's a TSO, um, and we saw this several times, a 01, I was pointing at it when we saw it. Uh, but it's interesting that we can just go through storage areas and show them in real time on a TSO session. Uh, to me, that's... Uh, it's wonderful, and we were able to do this stuff uh, in the mid-70s. Um, I don't think that any other operating system was as advanced in the 70s as this stuff here. So uh, let's try to execute it without the trace, and let's see what comes out. Okay, yeah, perfect. So that's exactly what I wanted. I just wanted to have something that just shows the user. And uh, of course, we could make a nicer, um, we could make format that I put a little nicer by saying, something here like say um, active users 1s only and then we could say say something like this right let's see how this looks but anyway the idea is here that uh, you see that how to search in the manuals and as you can see most areas are still there especially those at the beginning of all the tables if they added they of course they had to add towards the end of those control blocks and tables so if it's reasonably early in the table then you will probably find the same thing so now we can run who uh, when we're at the TSO or uh, here in that option six um, this one here we can just go there and say rx who and I will get uh, who's logged in right now it's only me I can say uptime and just tells me so we just did our second command here uh, as I said this will already exists in in TSO um, call who maybe that works nope <laughs> that doesn't work for me I have to go to the TSO command but okay I work this session so yeah, from the TSO command line, I could do that now, but uh, as you can see, um, let me just uh, try to log in again. Uh, right, so I'm going to reconnect. Uh, <laughs> Why can I not get out of this? All right, it uh, doesn't matter, but let me kill it with another session. Mm. 
So I can go here now, go cancel user equals herc01, and that's it. So let's move it here to the side, uh, herc01. Yeah, all right, so we fix this. This is the console, by the way. I don't think we need this here. And so let's go again to look at the source code, and this time I'll run you through it. So where, where is it, who? And now you can see here, we look at the CVT pointer. Uh, of course, you got all these control tables here. And then uh, we find there the ASVT, which brings us, the, which brings us close to the ASCB. And uh, then we look for, we try to look how many address spaces are active by getting a, is in the maximum amount of address spaces. And so we cycle through all those address spaces. And for each one, uh, we get the ASCB. From there, we try um, to see if this address space is assigned or not. And so if it is, um, then we get the uh, CSCB address. And from there, then um, we find, try to find out what kind of address space it is. If it has a bit, if it has a hex 01, that means it's a TSO user. And therefore, we can take the job name and print it out here on the screen. And that's really all there is to it. And this is just conversion from uh, for the pointers and for the storage value. So it's a very simple program. You're welcome to add more. Um, as you can see here, obviously, um, this when I do who tells us also the uh, the terminal. So it's a challenge to all the viewers of this channel to go get the terminal ID. It's certainly possible. And in fact, we've done it before. And if you look at terminal at uh, at my script in uh, in video 62, I think we have it here again. Uh, this will show you how to get the terminal ID. So um, all you need to do is look at this and uh, you'll be able to write also the terminal ID that the person is logged in uh, from. Um, also, I have assembled programs to do that. And uh, so that's another very simple uh, Rex program that we can do now because we have Rex. So you see here the power of Rex is very simple. And, um, and so I'm going to keep on writing more programs, maybe after this one. I'll do the uname, um, which in uh, Linux, um, you can see here uname, uh, tells me the Unix, but if I say minus A, it tells me the kernel ID. So let's see what we can extract with the uname, that, but that's going to be a separate video. Uh, I think it's nice to have short videos like this, and I'll start working on it uh, as soon as we publish this. Uh, We'll make another video with the uname command. So that's it for today. If you have any questions, then please uh, comment below this video. It also makes it easy for Google and other search engines to find this video and for other people who may have similar questions. And then um, also, if you have any bugs, questions, always uh, comment below the video. If you like this particular video, do press on the thumbs up button. I, I always like those. It's encouragement for everybody, including people sometimes call uh, co-edit and co-author videos together with me, such as Peter Jacob last time and Professor René Ferlon, uh, whom I'm going to meet, by the way, this summer um, in Canada. I'm going to meet, I'm going to visit him. And by the way, I'm also, I was invited again by an IBM organization or a mainframe organization in Europe to participate in one of their events. Uh, so I'm going to be there um, in um, this spring to participate at one of those events. That's always nice to meet other mainframers. I'm also going to be um, in, uh, in Southeast Asia. Uh, if, you have, if you happen to be in, uh, in Taiwan or uh, Singapore, I uh, would like to meet you there um, the next few weeks. And, um, and so that's it. Uh, thank you for, for watching this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe now. Thank you very much. Goodbye.